cool. Uh, then we'll work on the third section then. That's cool. Uh, like because there's some stuff from Cross Kick last week that uh, that that we didn't go over, which is in the in the text form. In the name of the text form is uh, right parry, left slap, and lotus swing, which is you uh, huazo san shir bai lian, right? Bai lian is like the same thing as the, the last movement, that kicking is the same circular shape. So I want to start... start. Yeah, actually, you know what, hang on, let me, let me uh, turn off this stuff here and uh, we can just actually do some do some Tai Chi yeah that's where it starts to move a little bit but it's really long yeah it's towards the end so alright cool alright let's let's, uh, let's practice Tai Chi start by lining yourself up Bring everything to the center. Pull your head top up. Grip your feet. Relax your shoulders. <clears throat> relax your hips. Take a deep breath. Bring your hands together in the center. <clears throat> Activate the half smile. Connect the tongue. <clears throat> Lift the base of the torso. And double check your feet. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> relax. Let's do a little bit of uh, relaxed breathing to start. So inhaling reaching out to the sides like you're stretching, reach all the way to the top like a stretch, and then exhale. So like you're pulling your body in two directions, your arms reaching all the way out, all the way up. You can time the breathing however you like. Because we're just starting out, relax your your lower half. So for this one, we're not squatting, standing. So get into a good standing posture. Grip your feet, really relax your tailbone, fold the inside, and then breathing deep. And then do three more slightly slower than you have been. When you finish, return to Tai Chi Harmony. Bring everything back to the center. Connect the feet, <clears throat> straighten the spine and neck, connect the tongue, relax the jaw, take a deep breath. And then from this posture, we're going to use this actually as a stretch. So sink more into your feet, relax your tailbone, but pull your head top up like you're pulling from two different ends and then turning. And we want to use the same breathing that we were just doing a second ago.
So grip your feet. You should not feel this in your knees. If you feel it in your knees, it means that you're turning too far. So relax. Turn your spine. Again, go at your own pace. Turn as far as you feel comfortable. It is a stretch, so you can turn a little bit more each time. Turn your eyes and look to see what is the furthest item that you can see when you're turned. Keep the head top up there. Let everything relax so that you can fully turn. And whatever you see out of the corner of your eye the next time, see clearly. And then look further. Do you remember which side you started with? If so, balance it out. When you finish, <clears throat> come back to the center. Take a deep breath. And then right from this posture, we're gonna fold. So relax your spine, use your abdominal muscles to support. And when you're ready, grip the ground with your feet, unroll your spine, <clears throat> everything straight to the top. Make your body in line, breathing deep, fully expand, relax. <clears throat> We're gonna do another one of those. Forward, breathing. You can use your legs to pull. Try to relax your body. When you're ready, grip the ground, breathe deep, inflate all the way up, unroll your spine. Relax. <clears throat> Next, uh, lock your shoulders in place and just take some time to put your mind between your neck and the upper shoulders here and rotate. Change directions if you haven't already. Remember the deep breathing that we started with. <clears throat> when you're finished, come back to the center. Do some shoulder rolls. You can time it with the breathing. Allow your hands to connect. Press your palms <clears throat> into the sides of your legs why you do this one. You can time it with the breathing. Change directions if you haven't already.
alternate. <clears throat> Let's do one more for the for the upper body. Uh, a lot of times we do turning this way instead pressing the, the body forwards and backwards. Allow the arms to relax. Keep your spine stable and strong and then allow everything from the center out to relax. Center is solid, everything else. Breathing deep. <clears throat> Come back to the center. Uh, next, grip your feet. We're gonna turn around the center. Imagine a square and you're pressing your hips into each corner of the square. Remember to breathe. Come back to the center. We're going to step shoulder width wide, shoulder width deep. Fold the inside of the hip, reach, breathing. You can use something for support if you like to feel more stable. Either pressing your chin forward or your crown forward. When you're ready, push forward, breathe deep. Stand up, stay with the ground. <clears throat> the other side. Shoulder width wide, shoulder width deep. Fold the inside of the hips. Stretch. Grip the ground with your standing foot. <clears throat> Push forward, breathe deep. You can practice more the stretching uh, on your own. Uh, I'm hoping in the future to do a series on both squatting, right, how to, how to squat properly, which will be the precursor to pubu, right, this type of stance, and how to do those correctly uh, so that you can practice Tai Chi for the rest of your life, able to get into a deep stance without injuring your joints. <clears throat> so with that, uh, we are going to practice the third section. And I believe last week we were working on cross kick. So let's practice at least up to that point. Uh, because we're starting in the third section, you can start in the center. So allow your feet to touch. Start in Tai Chi Harmony. When we start in Tai Chi Harmony, let's do a full calibration. Pull the head top all the way up. Relax the brow. Open the eyes and then allow them to relax. Open your nostrils sideways. Relax the front of your face, your sinuses. Activate the corners of the mouth. This is like the statue of the Buddha or the painting of the Mona Lisa, just the corners. <clears throat> Relax your jaw. Connect the tongue to the upper palate. The chin is tucked, the shoulders rolled back, relaxed, and the chest is hollow, meaning it's not pushed forward. The neck is straight. We still have the, the arc in the back curvature, but the feeling is that it's pushing up. Use the center to support, relax your back, allow all of this to expand and open, and then sit in your tailbone, relax the tailbone. In folding the insides of the hips, <clears throat> the knees have a bend. Flex your ankles, pull your heels in, pull the outside edges of the feet in, grip your toes, make the arch, on the foot, hollow. 
And then before we practice Tai Chi, all of these ideas we want to practice at every point, in every posture while we practice the form. So when you practice on your own, when you take this practice home with you, <clears throat> you can check gripping the feet, so on and so forth. So commencement, shoulder width wide, expand, relax, and then right into turning body, warning palm. So left hand, right foot, right hand, left foot to T-step, square step, facing south, palm press to the center, breathe deep, roll back. Press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split. Hook. Side whip. We're facing east. This is wild horse parts it's made. One, two, three. Roll back. Press. Push, look left, glance right, schwamp, split, hook, side whip facing north, four corners. Turn how you feel comfortable. Number three. Look first, then go. Left grasp the sparrow's tail. Right press. Horizontal split. Hook. I'm going to go back to the center. This is corner whip. <coughs> Snake creeps down. Coming back to the center. Jinji to Li on the right. Golden rooster. Left. Right into repulse the monkey. Two. Three. Sure thing. This is the same as the second section. Shoulder bump. Except now the left hand foot, the hook's bottom of the sea, San Paolo Bay, turn, block, punch, kick, square step, one, swing, and top up, eagle block. Breathe deep, change step, roll back. Press. 
press. Push. Horizontal split. Hook. Side whip. This is cloud hands. Press right, left. Two. Cloud hands, three. Hook. <clears throat> this is corner whip. Keep your waist turning. Shift back, snake, flashing your tongue, turning, pull right, kick right. This is what we've been working on, cross kick, brush, punch, fold, change step, breathe deep, roll back. Press, push, look left, glance right, double press, split, hook, corner whip. Snake. Creeps down. Stepping due west. Step up to seven stars. Turning 90 degrees to the north. Walk. Turning 180 degrees to the south. Bite in. Facing south, south, west. Wong Dong Siru. Block, punch, hit, square step, breathe deep, lock, chui, rufu, sibi, return tiger to mountain, blocking, punch, punch. Center. <clears throat> it wasn't so bad. We survived. Okay. So let's talk about cross grip kick. By the way, uh, if you have questions, uh, you can ask at any point. But let's look at the movement that happens right before a cross kick. So, uh, in this, do we, I think we talked about snake flashing its tongue. And uh, this is, snake flashing its tongue is, has a very Bagua-esque feel to it for Tai Chi. And uh, so if, if we just do a quick review of that, if I'm doing hook and whip, I have hook and I turn this way for single whip. Power is coming to my center. And so I shift back to avoid and I use this hand to cover. And in addition to covering this movement, this circular this way, I want to sweep whatever's there out to the side. And in addition to that, this other hand is also swinging. So if we do this exercise we skipped earlier, <clears throat> this movement has that feel from hook, whip, right, this power coming back. And if you leave the fingers open, they should be very sharp. But this is snake flashing, its tongue should be a spear fist. <clears throat> so in the form, we face this direction, after cloud hands, right? So we have hook, we have parallel whip, cloud hands left, right, left, right, hook, corner whip, 
snake flashing his tongue, right? So that's the before we turn the other way to get into cross kick. So just standing still, if I have my arms turn, one is going to come past my kidney, my hip here, and go over the top. <clears throat> what are the three portions of it? We avoid, we make contact, we advance, right? So the shift back, cover, move forward is the basics of that one. Uh, after we have that movement, we assume uh, in the form, we turn 180, there's an opponent behind us. So when I have hook, whip, snake flashing its tongue, now when I turn 180, <clears throat> I'm turning this hand out. In the, in the second section, when we turn 180, this one time we have this movement, and the other time we have this. It's called turn and block and chop with fist, right? It has a long name, but uh, but but I just call it block, punch, kick, right? Block, punch, kick, right? That's what's happening. But all at once, right? They should all be arriving at the same time. Well, cross kick, very similar, but instead of the power, these half circles here, if we put this maybe as a post-processing. By the way, I never edit my videos. Uh, I, <laughs> I get on here uh, weekly and I don't uh, cut them editorially. I don't say things uh, that would need to make me edit them. So, but maybe with this particular one, we can put some kind of post-processing <laughs> on these. I'm trying to watch the camera while I do the thing. And see these circles that emerge, right? This circle that comes off the foot, right? And they sort of turn in this direction. Cross kick, the thing that we started talking about last week, has the same feeling, right? We see these three, uh, they might be more egg-shaped, or my teacher would say shaped like a lotus pad, right? Like a, like a type of oval. So from snake flashing its tongue, when we turn, this next one, pull right, kick right, is the same at the, at the end of the second section. After we have two winds in the air and we step back and we pull here and kick, and then we turn 180, pull and kick. That's the same kick, right? But it's just coming off of snake flashing its tongue. Now we have this, right? You can make it as fancy as you like. Block, punch, kick, right? It's not block, punch, kick after that. It's cross kick after this one in the third section. So, what is cross kick? We started to talk about it last week. <clears throat> Think of these three circles. And the power dynamic is the half circle. Uh, you may gather momentum from the top, but then coming from the bottom of the circle up, right? So this fist is turning up this way and the foot it's kicking up has this shape and the power starting here and ending here, right? We may want to say it goes, keeps going, but the half circle is the shape and the hand the same. Hand changing from yin to yang, two shapes, from beak fist, right? Just like we have when we do hook and all the fingers come together. This is, we can also use this as beak fist. So from beak fist to slap. So before we started class, there was a recording. Uh, we were talking about the name for this one in Mandarin, and, and this is, it's, uh, I think Left Slap is in the title, right? So <clears throat> these three, three half circles that we're looking for, you can think of them as a yin-yang shape. And this one also, by the way, changing, going from open to closed. This one going from closed to open, the foot relaxed to power. <clears throat> Is, are the... Question. Yeah, go ahead. The right hand, is it is it uh, doing like a, 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 a breakaway or is it, is it, is it punching something? 
ah, this is this is a, a what where actually my next statement is, or, or I start asking a question: Is it offensive or defensive? Right? Can it be both? <clears throat> yes. The answer is yes. It can be both. But for this purpose, for for the basic, how do we do the posture? This is this is a block, right? Whatever our opponent has here in front of us, we're blocking, right? The very basic, like grasp the sparrow's tail, right? We have this circular movement, and and it changes yin yang tai chi from soft being open to firm when we make either the moment of impact or when we. The forearm, in this case, should be rotating off of the opponent. So that's this one. This next one, is it offensive or defensive? Where well, we have this beak, exploding tip beak fist that opens this way. Offensive, right? This is meant to be a strike. And where do we put it? It's going to the side of the head, right? Maybe, maybe the ear, right? Somewhere on the, the cheek. But we want to have this focus power, and you can practice on your own hand. Don't don't hurt yourself. Don't do it too many times. But practice as if this was happening in in 100 frames per second or a thousand frames per second in super slow motion. We actually want the beak fist to actually hit, and then we have we're, we're driving this. If you look at the back of my hand, if I can get the light to show it, the tendons are driving that open so that there's contact with the fingertips until the moment where my palm is actually hitting the surface, right? So you can practice, can you get it to hit and slap at the same time? There's two, move, there's two things happening at the same time, right? And this is offensive, right? Uh, you may use the offensive tactic defensively, something like that, but uh, this is offensive. The hand, if, there's, if the opponent doesn't have anything there, they don't have any weapon there, you could use it as a strike. But I would think of this as more of a defense in this case, right? So we have defense, offense. And the foot is, uh, you know, can be, again, either. If we want to, uh, if they're kicking, we can use this to get around. If there's a weapon down there or a leg, something, we can use that to avoid because we have a balance while we're doing all this stuff we should <clears throat> and then can we use it offensively of course and this is not like a typical kind of kick we're not trying to deliver a lot of power with this kick we're actually trying to hook behind the leg especially the soft tissue right behind the knee right so if you <clears throat> can get just a little bit of power to that point. I don't know, uh, when I was a kid on the playground, maybe this is this is boys stuff, uh, we, would, we would always try to just tap behind the other person's leg and, because the leg buckles. And when you're children, nobody gets hurt, but as adults. So this half hook is to get behind the leg, right? So that's is it offensive? Is it defensive to take the opponent off of there? I would say it's it's offensive, but it's a different strategy. We don't need a lot of power. We just need to, like an acupuncturist, focusing the power to a point. We just need to hit behind the leg. And even if you don't get behind the leg, the side of the leg, right? All these tendons on the side of the knee, basically anywhere around this area back here. So that's what this half circle is not only if we looked at it in 2D space, this way we have these half circles, but in the case of the leg, there's also a hooking out this way, right? So this is, and by the way, uh, with all respect to the original, I refer to this as cross kick because that's, TC said that's the easiest way to remember. So we have whole right, kick right. And by the way, this can be just like the second section can be very simple. After snake flashes its tongue, we can turn and focus more on the right side kick. And then from here, we have cross kick. And the, we should not touch the ground, but we can touch the ground. Because there's a lot of dynamic turning and changing, 
right? So if I have hook and I have lip and I turn this way, now when I turn and I pull here, right? Now if I don't have my balance, I have to touch the ground. So I can use that half circle here to maintain my balance while I'm turning. And then remember the added extension. If you have the, the balance and you have the body strength, like we talked about pivoting on the heel, right? Is this movement <laughs> is where we're balanced on the heel and we turn, turn the body. Uh, so not, not necessary, but that sort of added, in addition to all of this, we can turn the structure like a door if I have all three of these, right? If you imagine on the door and the hinge is down there, turning, right? So this central feeling also, when the opponent is there, we can block. This one could be a block, but if they see, right? We have to move to, we have to change to a different strategy afterwards, right? Uh, does that answer you? Does that question? Yes, okay. Let's do uh, just the section, just we'll do cloud hands and then turn and do the thing, right? So if we start from the center, cloud hands one, one, cloud hands two, two, Cloud hands three, three, hook, corner whip. For this I say keep the waist turning, continuous movement, snake, flashing its tongue, turn, 180, pull right, kick right, cross kick, square step. <clears throat> Let's do the same thing again. Plow hands right and left. Breathing deep. Right and left. Right. Left. Hook, square step, corner whip. Keep the waist turning, shift back. Snake, flash its tongue, turn 180, grip the ground, kick, cross kick, square step, rush, punch. <clears throat> One more time. Right, left, right, left, right, left, hook, corner whip, shift back, cover, snake flashes its tongue, turn 180, pull, Kick, cross kick, square step, rush, punch, fold knees. <clears throat> Let's do that same thing one more time. Plow hands. By the way, when you practice at home, you should practice a lot slower. We move fairly quickly through class. Right, left, hook, corner whip, snake, flashing his tongue, turn, pull, kick, cross kick, square step, brush, punch, deep walk. Shang, <clears throat> breathe deep, relax. Yeah, so 
a lot of times when I'm teaching in this class, uh, we're moving maybe maybe three times the speed that you might uh, want to move when you're practicing uh, on your own. And uh, I recommend something to sort of keep your your pace natural and in tune with nature is, is look at the pace that the clouds crossing the sky. And when you see that timing, you can make your Tai Chi or look at the, the way the wind is blowing in the trees. When you see that timing, right, when you feel that, uh, this may not be true if there's a water moving too quickly. It may be too quick, it may be correct. Uh, so practice is uh, natural for your environment here because we're trying to review material. It's more of a more of a workbook. When you go out into the field, take your time and, and uh, practice at a slower speed. Question, thought, comment. Yeah, at, at the end of cross kick into the next step, um, there there's a brush brush knee. Is it brush the right knee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is or, or brush the left knee. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so so if I'm facing camera, let's see, I have uh, hook, corner whip, snake flashes its tongue, I turn, pull and kick, cross kick, square step, brush, punch. And this punch, by the way, is just like the second section, coming up to the ear, right, to come down. So we're using gravity on the, the descent. And uh, so up to that point, just like the second section, uh, just like we have brush, uh, brush knee, punch low, and then we turn, block, punch, kick, launch way, so hua, peel off, kick. So uh, the same. And uh, let's see, di bu hua also appears earlier in this form as well. So it appears twice in the third section. And the second time it changes, right, which is, uh, maybe that's what I'm trying to push into next week's lesson because I feel like we've already covered a lot of material. But the third debu that we encounter in the entire form is only a half debu So instead of if we've been for the prior one in the second section and the first one in the third section, if we've been doing a full debu and then we change step to roll back, the last one, the final debu after we have lawn, or uh, sorry, is uh, where's it come? Cross kick, square step, brush, punch. The second dibuqua is half dibuqua, and that's not the one. That's the next dibuqua, right? So, uh, <clears throat> any other questions, thoughts, comments? Okay. Uh, let's actually call that good for today. Let's do some. Let's do some Qigong. So we covered uh, to review before we before we end. After cloud hands, we have hook and corner whip. Snake flashing his tongue. Avoid, make contact, advance. Next, turning, pull right, kick right. Just like the second section, you can make the big fancy one, or you can after you have snake flashes his tongue, you can turn. Pull, kick, block, punch, or no, sorry, this is <laughs> cross kick, square step, punch. <clears throat> Hook, corner whip, snake, flash against the tongue, turn 180, pull right, kick right, cross kick, square step, brush, punch. One more time. Hook, corner whip, snake flashing tongue, pull right, kick right, cross kick, square step, rush, punch. <clears throat> Let's go one more time. Hook, corner whip, waist, continue the waist turn the entire time. 
kick, cross kick, step, rush, punch. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. If there's no questions, thoughts, comments, uh, let's actually do some, do some, uh, she going to sort of cool down and relax. Uh, let's start with square step, sunrise, sunset, breathing. Activate your feet, relax your tailbone. Have the energy going all the way up to the top. And have the feeling in your torso like a bellows. Bellows is the device they use to blow on fire. So it, uh, in the old times, they would use an animal skin as a type of bag, as a type of pouch. But in modern times, they have something that has, it looks like it has two handles. So when you open your arms, pull your ribs up, out, and open so that your ribs, so that your lungs inside of your rib cage can expand. So use your arms like a bellows to open your body like a pry bar that pulls the whole torso to expand for more air. And on this next one at the top, go at your own pace, by the way. Again, <clears throat> when we're here, our time is limited. all the way out. Keep the tongue connected. And now that you're into the Qigong, put your mind someplace you like. Think about what you like to experience. The things that you like to do. What you like to see happen. Continuing to use the arms as a mechanism to assist breathing. I'm not counting, but come up to the center. And then let your hands float. Earlier we had talked about the movement in the trees, the movement in the stream, the movement of the sky. <clears throat> Bring your feet back together at the center and then allow your hands to cover. Grip your feet. And then everything that we've just done, all the Tai Chi, all the Qigong, the breathing, the stretching, the relaxation. Imagine all of that goes into the center. So breathing, <clears throat> any warm feeling you feel in your body, the extra Qi, excess Qi, as if you're breathing pattern makes a whirlpool or makes a suction down to the center so that all of the extra energy coming back to the middle. <clears throat> and 
And then before you move your hands, imagine there's a portal and you can close it off, right? So, so your hands there, they feel warm. And so you close the, the gate, relax your arms, your hands, your fingers, and then breathing deep, return to Tai Chi harmony. Grip your feet and shift around like a bamboo. So my feet are locked to the ground, turn, and then come back to the center. And then again, move your mind to the Dantian, right into the middle. Take a deep breath, looking inwards. Have a gratitude practice to yourself, for yourself. <clears throat> and then move your mind up into the center, into the heart chakra. And then smiling, take a deep breath. Allow your heart to relax. The heart is a muscle. And then it has a surrounding, the pericardium that goes around that. And so imagine breathing that you can fill the pericardium and that you can fill the heart. So take a second to smile at your center, at your heart. And then move where you think your mind is up into the center, the third eye, the brain. And the same thing, imagine your brain and imagine that by breathing deep you can allow your brain to actually relax and expand. <clears throat> we don't want it to be swollen, but we want it to expand from being tense. So take a second, smile to your brain, it's marvelous. It allows you to operate your fingers and toes at a high level or Tai Chi. So have a gratitude practice up top for everything that's happening. And then breathing deep, bring all that again back to the center. <clears throat> One long last deep breath. And that's it. Call, write, text. Yeah, thanks Brian, good class. Great, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I almost, uh, I almost had a like a voice only class today on space weather, so we can have a, a little post recording maybe before it's uh, the time time runs out. But uh, you know whether you whether you buy into the concept of, of space weather or not, uh, one of the things we don't talk about in this class very much is Ting Hua Na Da. We, I talk about Hua Na Da, which is avoid, make contact, advance, right? these three phases, but there's traditionally in the Tai Chi classics, there's a, there's a, another one that comes first and it's called Ting. And Ting translates to listening, right? Uh, and in fact, there's a, a special kind of Qi power that can be called Ting Jing, right? When you have <laughs> listening power. So, uh, but, but TC would say we should cultivate our our meditation, we should cultivate our minds at a high level so that we always have ting jing. We always have the listening power, we're always aware, sensitivity is very high. After you practice Tai Chi for some time, you should develop this, right? And so, uh, but, but part of that is, uh, even before we get into the situation where we have to listen, we can look out the window and we can see what the weather is like. If you've seen here, uh, if we watched this class in time lapse, we see the sun has moved all around the room because of clouds moving. So we know there's clouds out there, right? This is the same with uh, the, the space weather, right? The same with electromagnetic energy that w that's, that's happening here on Earth uh, can create a lot of uh, miscommunication, right? If an electromagnetic storm can affect an, an AM, FM radio, which is a piece of metal on quartz, right? That's very, that's hardware, right? And that electromagnetic force, the storm, can affect this hardware. How much more so a liquid computer, right? The brain is a liquid, so how much more is that affected? And I won't go too far into it, but uh, we all know there's some days you wake up and uh, you, you can't go wrong, right? Before you're even out of bed, there's breakfast, right? And before your feet are on the floor, you got your coffee. And before you even get into the bathroom, the shower is warm. You can't miss. And there's other days when you can't succeed, right? You stub your toe even before you get it onto the floor somehow, 
right? And when it's when you step on the floor, the animal, your pet has gone there, and now you have to clean. So you're going to be late for work. All of these uh, sort of things. Uh, some Taoists will say at some point can can be traced to some type of emanation coming from from outer space. Not that you're stubbing your toe because the the stars are aligned the wrong way, but uh, when when we do have this kind of cosmic uh, energy approaching, it can it can disrupt communication is the way that I describe it, which can cause you to have things like stub your toe or spill your your coffee. Uh, not that we blame this, but again, before we go outside, we look out and know what it is. And if you see the patterns of space weather where there's poor communication and things are misfiring and you can trace it back to not uh, your problem is coming from some type of external source, then we know maybe don't go out into that weather. And so today I thought maybe we won't have a class. I don't know if you can see, I feel like my balance today is, is, is all whack. So uh, maybe we shouldn't have class, who knows. But uh, pay attention. If you, if you uh, like a tree in a storm, right, the closer you are to the root, the less movement the less turbulence there is, right? So when there's a lot of polykarma activity, when there's a lot of space weather, when there's a lot of uh, chaos and confusion, the tree up here is moving. The leaves actually blow off the tree. They can't stay on, the whole branches blow off. But at the root, unless the storm is so powerful to pull the whole tree off, at the root there's no movement. And this is the same with our, uh, if we want to look at our mindset, right? Uh, the closer you are to the root is the less you're disturbed when there's when there's a big disturbance. And the further you are away from that, like the leaves blowing on the tree erratically, right? The next time that there's a big storm that rolls through. I know some of you live in sort of a desert area, so look, even the palm tree represents this, right? You watch the base. The top is blowing like crazy, right? These things are going, and people are the same, right? The ones that are out here on the tips, they're having such a difficult time. But the ones that are closer to the root, uh, very stable, right? And that's the place where we like to have our mind. So bringing that back to Tai Chi, Ting, we should always have the Ting. We should always have a high level of consciousness. And practice Tai Chi, we can arrive in that, in that place. Right, are, are you, are you um, connecting this to the eclipse going on? today? Is that the... No, 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 no. By the way, uh, this and this class is going to end here in a minute, but but just a quick teaching on this. TC one time said, there's some people that looking for some occurrence happening in outer space or across the other part of the globe, they say there's a holy thing and we have to... But he would say, they'll face a brick wall when there's a garden next to them. So uh, we have to look at more about what's happening in our our personal space and not necessarily when I talk about space weather this is more a little bit more abstract but uh, something that, that we can consider so let's not get into oh the the planets out there made me do it it's it's uh, no just if you see the eclipse yeah uh, protect your eyes if you watch that sort of thing right it's yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of astronomy and, and what happens uh, it, what, how, how humans interact with the, the uh, outside world. So in any case, enjoy that phenomenon. Bef before, before time runs out, uh, I'm going to actually close. So thank you. Uh, have a great day, and, and I will, I'll see you online. Yeah, see you, man. Thanks, guys. I'll see you.